minus 10. Nine. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And the liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket and Dragon spacecraft filled with science and supplies for humanity's research outpost in low Earth orbit, the International Space Station. SpaceX ascent commentary will be performed by several people. The propulsion engineer calls out propulsion events. The avionics engineer calls out avionics health and dragon. Good afternoon and welcome to our SpaceX CRS-13 post-launch news conference. I'm Stephanie Martin of NASA Communications. I'm joined by NASA manager of the Transportation Integration Office for the International Space Station Program, Ven Fang, and the SpaceX Director of Dragon Mission Management, Jessica Jensen. We'll begin in the room with opening comments from our presenters, and then we'll take your questions. Ben? We'll see. Thank you. Let's see. What a spectacular launch. As a matter of fact, spectacular launch and landing on this great uh, morning here in Florida. Uh, I must admit I had a little sense of deja vu as we sat here six months ago and, and watched the launch and landing very similar on this very same booster. So it was uh, quite an achievement. It was very nice. Let's see. Um, in order to get here for uh, today to, on this reflown booster, we, uh, our uh, launch services team and the International Space Station program team, uh, did very thorough assessments to get here. So I just wanted to say thank you, first of all, to our LSP team based out of here at KSC, as well as the NASA technical team that worked along with SpaceX in order to get us here uh, for today's successful launch. Let's see, on orbit, the space station's in very good shape. Um, the crew's ready to receive um, Dragon on Sunday morning, about 6 a.m. Central Time. Uh, Mark Vandehei is the uh, prime robotics operator. Uh, Joe Okaba uh, is the support. And uh, we're very much looking forward to 4,800 pounds of critical research, resupply, and spares uh, arriving at ISS on Sunday. Thank you. Good morning, or it's almost afternoon now. So yeah, this was just a fantastic way to end the year for SpaceX East Coast launches. We started off the year with a 10th cargo resupply mission to the space station. And that was actually the first launch out of the reactivated historic pad 39A. That's the same launch pad that astronauts flew to the moon on, many shuttle missions, and then we reactivated that pad. And CRS-10 was the first mission to launch off of that pad earlier this year. Then, as you all saw today, we had the newly built pad 40, and it was great to have another CRS mission, our fourth Dragon of this year, launch off that pad for the first time on the first attempt. It's just a great day all around. Um, I do want to give a special thanks to NASA. Um, they were very flexible in scheduling us on with all their ISS traffic constraints and all their research and science constraints. We really want to thank them for everything you guys have done to you know, preserve this opportunity. And yeah, really happy we, we launched today. It was great. Um, let's see. I'd also like to recognize the incredible work by our Pad 40 team. Um, like I said, because it was a challenge, um, the launch dates in December after this point would be pretty much extremely challenging to not be able to launch at all um, for a while to the ISS. So our teams had to work super hard to make sure that we were able to launch today, and they did a great job of that. So I just want to thank everyone on the SpaceX team, the CAPE launch team, and NASA for their guidance along the way, the Air Force, the FAA, everyone who helped get this pad ready to go. It was a great launch, and uh, the launch site director, John Murator, has confirmed that literally a few minutes after launch, he confirmed that everything on the pad looked great. The fuel systems were still up, lock systems, helium, everything looked great. The additional blast protection and all the additional work they put into this pad um, kept it strong, which means we'll be able to have much faster turnarounds in the future. Uh, so as you may remember from the pre-launch conference, this was, yeah, a previously flown Dragon mission. Um, so this capsule previously flew on CRS-6, and we're very excited to have it in orbit again. The, so it got placed into a nominal orbit, the solar arrays have deployed, and the next thing that happens is the guidance, navigation, and control bay door will open. That's a pretty long period, so that's going to happen next. Um, then we also had a flight proven booster this mission. This booster supported the CRS-11 mission in June of this year. So that booster flew to space, came back, landed at Cape Canaveral Landing Zone 1, refurbished, launched today, and it landed again. I believe we have a video of that. And a sonic boom passes across the Florida Space Coast. Like as the deploy. Falcon 9 first stage makes a pinpoint landing back at landing zone one at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. LZ-1, the F-9 has landed. Uh, landing operators proceed to procedure 11.100 in section three on LZ-1 net. 
So I will also encourage anyone who has never been to the Cape for a launch or a landing, come out here. The sonic booms are awesome and launches are great. So you should come out here. Um, so yeah, it's been a successful mission so far. Um, again, I just want to thank NASA, the FAA, and the Air Force for all their support, all their guidance, and their tremendous help in getting us here today. Thank you, Jessica. We'll now take your questions here in the room. If you have a question, please raise your hand. When I call on you, state your name, affiliation, to whom you're addressing your question. And we will also be taking questions on uh, social media using hashtag AskNASA on Twitter. Let's see for the first question, Ken. All right, Ken Kramer, Universe Today and Space Up Close. Uh, Jessica, can you give us a preliminary uh, run through of how did these reused uh, Falcon 9 and, and Dragon perform? And can you talk a little bit about the contamination issue with the second stage that delayed this a few days? Thanks. Sure. Um, so the performance of both Falcon 9 and Dragon were totally nominal. You would, there's no difference. You literally wouldn't know whether it was a brand new booster and a brand new Dragon versus previously flown. And that's the whole point of it. So yeah, all every parameter that I saw in the launch control room, I think Ben saw too, is nominal. We didn't see anything odd due to these being previously flown. Um, with regards to the issue that we saw the past few days, um, we did find a small amount of particulate in the second stage fuel tank. Um, we found that out after doing inspections after our static fire testing. Um, the good news is we were able to flush all that out and verify all of our filters were in place. We checked everything on the ground side as well as checking all the tanks again on Falcon 9. Even though we only saw this in the second stage fuel tank, you know, out of an abundance of caution, we checked the second stage lock tank, locks tank as well as the first stage fuel and locks tanks. Um, and so we did several flushes. We wanted to take a few extra days just to be safe. So we did many extra flushes and ensured that basically our ground systems and our flight systems were all good for flight. Mm -hmm. Over here. Uh, Chris Gebhardt with NASA Space Flight with one for both of you. Um, uh, what's Dragon's nominal departure date from the ISS in January? Um, and for Jessica, um, at a recent aerospace safety advisory panel meeting, there was talk about the about using a crew an, a cargo Dragon to test out some heat shield defects to validate um, micrometeoroid impacts for crew Dragon assessments. I was wondering if you could talk about what those potential defects you might put on a cargo dragon heat shield would be and what missions or missions those are going to fly on. Okay. Do you want to answer the first question about return? Sure, that'll be a pretty quick one. Uh, we're, we're, um, we're currently nailing down the date, but it should be in the middle of January. Uh, we're looking at the on-orbit activities, uh, we're looking at our vehicle traffic uh, and other activities on orbit, as well as the amount of time for the research on orbit. So, uh, so it should be right around uh, the middle of January. Yes, and with regards to demonstrations on cargo vehicles, so the way we currently work is, yeah, it's great that we have this Dragon 1 vehicle um, as sort of a precursor to the crew missions we're going to fly. So what we do is we work with NASA on the cargo Dragon 1 missions to say, hey, is there a certain type of hardware we can fly or is there, you know, pieces of either a heat shield or the thermal protection system on the side that, you know, we should do testing on the cargo Dragon mission to get some additional flight. And so we've done that on a few different experiments with them. Um, and yeah, basically we have to make sure that whatever we're doing to the Dragon 1 capsule is gonna be safe and reliable for that flight. That's of the utmost importance, but it's also this great way to learn more about the crew vehicle before people actually fly in it. So we have a really good relationship with NASA in working through um, those, temp those demonstrations. Um, is it, um, were, were, were those, was the discussion at the ASAP meeting then about, you know, potentially putting some defects in a cargo dragon heat shield just speculation of things that could be done or, or is that an actual plan for it for a future mission before the crew dragons start flying? Yeah, so I can't go into details of any of the experiments and I apologize, I don't know exactly what was stated at the ASAP panel, but I can tell you that we do perform demonstration missions on, or demonstration objectives on Dragon One. Is there another question in the room about today's mission? Uh, Emery Kelly with uh, with Florida today. Uh, Jessica's question is is for you. Um, why exactly is particulates in a second stage a bad thing? Why is it a bad thing? Um, so launches are, are, are crazy things. So basically, a million things have to go right, but any one of them can go wrong. And particulates is one of those things that can go wrong. If they get clogged somewhere, you could have some issues with performance. So there, it's really hard to quantify exactly what would happen. But um, basically. 
everything dealing with a launch because once it takes off, you don't have commanding capability of the launch vehicle. Dragon, we have commanding capability once in orbit, but for Falcon 9, it runs autonomously through its entire flight, so uh, once it's in the air. So based on that, you just want to take every precaution possible. Like I said, you want to make sure all those million things go right and that not one of them goes wrong. Perfect. We'll now take a question from hashtag AskNASA on Twitter. Yeah, so at a shower asks, will NASA be flying more reusable first stages? Let's see. So <clears throat> we have, uh, we've agreed uh, for this one flight, and we're uh, going forward on a case-by-case -case basis. So uh, there's many different aspects that we look at. Uh, we look at uh, what booster, what that booster's life may have been in the past. We look at uh, what our history might be with that booster and so forth. So at this point, we're case-by-case. Um, case. We case we decided uh, to do the, the one which launched today uh, based on, uh, the study that took uh, months really to get to, and we're considering that for the future as well, but no decision's been made yet. Do we have another question in the room? Just one second. Roland Keller of uh, Swiss Engineering uh, Magazine and uh, Swiss Space Association. Uh, I would like to know, uh, what do you like the most is it the takeoff or the landing? <laughs> Is that for me? I like the dragon arrival. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh huh. I lift off is my favorite. The primary mission is what matters. If you don't have that happen, the landings don't mean anything. So, you know, the landings are really cool and really fun to watch, especially from here because you can see them live. But um, lift off is definitely the best part. Question in the corner. Hi, I'm Tom Cross with Tesserati. I have uh, two questions for you, Jessica. Mm -hmm. Do can we expect to see the pre-flown boosters unpainted from now on? And also, uh, is there a plan to refly a third time on any of them? So, <clears throat> for whether they're going to be pre-painted uh, or not, going forward, um, I don't know exactly where we are with steel numbers. We've actually landed many rockets, and I can't. I don't have track of them right now. Um, so I believe most of them in the future, you will see them as not painted, but there still might be some coming in as painted. Um, we actually have to run some tests on them and make sure that the amount of soot on it is allowable. So some of them may be painted, some of them might not be. And yes, in the future, um, we do plan to reuse boosters um, at, at least three times. Is there one currently planned to be flown? I don't know of one currently planned, but um, I don't know what, of one of this date. Okay, thank you. I believe we have another question from hashtag AskNASA on Twitter. Yes, Jason Lins asks, is the first stage the only part of the rocket that gets reused? Yes, it's very difficult to bring the second stage back from orbit. Right here in the room. Uh, Chris Gephardt again with NASA Space Flight. Um, I don't know if you know this, Jessica, but status of the landing pads for the Falcon Heavy demonstration? Are they are they ready for that or? Yes, yeah, so we only well, so we only need to build one more landing pad. So Falcon Heavy is um, three cores. So um, for the demonstration mission, we are going to have LZ two ready to support that mission. It's right next to LZ one, and then the other booster will go to a drone ship landing. Ken, can you talk about um, please? First, congratulations on a great success. I forgot to say before. All right. Um, why are they unpainted, these boosters, today and potentially in the future? And why were the stripes there? Thanks. Yeah. So basically, there's no reason to paint them. If we do conductivity checks, we verify um, thermal properties, and everything is good to go, there's just no reason to repaint it. You're just basically adding mass and spending resources that are not needed. So there's just not a requirement for it if we can verify that, um, like I said, the thermal properties of it are acceptable for flight. And the reason that you see some marks on it is um, when every booster comes back, there is a certain amount of inspections we have to do. They're called non-destructive inspections. And a lot of times those happen particularly at welded joints um, or certain other joints. And so that's just where we've had to clean off the area to do an inspection to make sure it's good for the next flight. I believe mm -hmm. we have another question from social media. Yeah, so Chris Cormier was wondering, how many times is a Falcon 9 rocket, rocket likely to be reused? How many times? Um, so in the future, we are going to reuse them a lot. <laughs> Won't give an exact number today, but it's going to be a lot. Yeah, we're certifying for at least 10 flights and hoping for a lot more. Question in the back of the room. 
Uh, Bill Jellard from We Report Space. As far as fairing recovery, how many have pieces, how many times have you got a piece of a fairing back and will you be attempting that again for the Zuma launch? So I, my expertise is Dragon. I don't know which missions we do fairing recoveries for, so I can't speak on that. But I do know we have been getting, um, we have been working fairing recovery. So that's about all I know. If I speak on that, I will probably say something wrong. <laughs> do we have any more questions in the room about today's mission? I believe that will conclude our post-launch news conference for today. You can always follow more on the SpaceX CRS mission by visiting www.nasa.gov forward slash SpaceX. And you can keep up with the exciting research on the International Space Station at www.nasa.gov forward slash station. Thank you for joining us.